Where's the stock market headed? Up, down, or just plain sideways? Where are the best opportunities right now? Dave cuts through the fluff in a no-nonsense manner. Random Thoughts with Dave Landry Podcast. Here's your host, Dave Landry. This is your Random Thoughts Podcast for Friday, July 1st, 2016. Note, the original column was written on June 28th. I will have a follow-up towards the end. How to handle the Brexit slide and the next 100 market downturns. Markets go up and markets go down. You don't need to stay in a Holiday Inn Express to know that. However, emotionally, many can't handle a market downturn. Here's how to handle the Brexit slide and the next 100 market downturns. Plan for market downturns. I was in Hong Kong a few months ago. One of the traders there was kind enough to be my handler for a venue across town. I use the word trader loosely because the Hang Seng was down around 30%. And so was he. Instead of getting out of the way, he let his positions get away from him. He explained to me that he couldn't sell now because he was down too much. Trying to interject some sort of emotionally based reasoning into the market is never a good idea. Follow the plan, which should include a plan for getting out of the way. Otherwise, you'll become the proverbial deer in the headlights. Never forget that it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. You have to have a plan. That plan has to have a contingency that the market might go against you. The reason many people don't plan is the moment that you make a plan is the moment that you admit you could be wrong. And guess what? You will be wrong. And unfortunately, you'll actually be wrong quite often. That goes for you, me, and the guy who screams on TV. Get used to it or find something else to do. In fact, as I preach, every trade will eventually end badly. Knowing this from the start is actually liberating. The solution is simple. All you have to do is, like my wife Marcy explaining a simple plumbing project to me, all you have to do is, well, in trading, all you really do have to do is plan your trade and trade your plan. I know, like plumbing, it's much easier said than done, but that truly is all you have to do. Take market downturn signals seriously. Greg Morse, friend and former fund manager of Billions, once said that they treat all signals as if they will become the big one. Greg's right. The old hedge fund adage, he who fights and runs away, lives to fight another day, comes to mind. By the way, Greg also says that whipsaws are frustrating, bear markets are devastating. You can survive frustration, but you can't survive devastation. Last summer, we had a major bow tie sell signal. Major is defined as a weekly signal coming off of all-time highs. That signal remains in effect until and unless the market goes on to make new highs. You have to be prudent and not obstinate. You have to have a general framework and then work around that. I got a nasty grin because the market didn't go down in spite of all my pontifications about a major sell signal. He pointed out how wrong I was and suggested that, I quote, maybe I should consider another line of work. Well, if I was always right, you'd never see my fat ass again. Not every signal will turn into the big one, Elizabeth implied. However, channeling Greg, every signal must be taken seriously. Now, just because I had a sell signal didn't mean that I sold the form. Yes, we did have a half a dozen or so shorts late last year, earlier this year, but for the most part, we have been buying stocks. We've just been prudent and super duper selective. Each potential position was taken in context of the fact that there was a sell signal in place and the market was sideways at best. So the setups had to be great, knowing going in that we don't have a tailwind. They had to be something that could trade independently of the market. Very speculative issues, for example, IPOs, that wouldn't know a fundamental if it hit them in the ass, and commodity-related stocks are examples here. It's been said that the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Sometimes in markets you get a signal, and not much happens. Then you get another signal, and that's the real deal. Not to digress too far, but I actually know a trader who only lets the new guys take second signals until they get their feet wet. This way, they trade less, but more accurately, and build confidence. Anyway, my point is that tops and bottoms can be an event, but they can also be a process. As I've been saying, this is the slowest rollover that I have ever seen. Sometimes it takes a top, or bottom, time to form. In classic TA terms, these process-type bottoms and tops can be double bottoms, double tops, cups, saucers, etc., Looking to the P's, that's the S&P 500, notice that the weekly bow tie triggered last summer. And we could get a back-to-back signal. Maybe this one is the big one. Elizabeth? Take a look at the major tops in a variety of markets throughout history, or watch my YouTubes where I point this out often. Notice that signals often come off of major bow ties 
with many being second mouse type signals. Timing market downturns is tough. I suppose I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that the market timing is tough. I think you're much better off being a trader of individual stocks. Indices are efficient. Indexers, hedgers, one-liners, jokers, and midnight tokers make for a crowded playing field. Often, they cancel each other out, making for choppy trading. In spite of them being hard to predict and even harder to trade, you still have to obviously pay attention to what the overall market is doing. Is it generally going up, down, or just plain sideways? By the way, in spite of what seems to be universally preached, markets do not always go up longer term. Why the lie? Well, it's much easier to be a salesman than a market timer. It's much easier to tell your client not to worry because we're in for the long haul and then go off and make another sale. The reason I'm thinking about this is because recently someone I know who just got into investing was told just that. She and others that are a little late to the party will likely be the first to go. Friends are starting to ring me. They first ask if I'm okay. Once I tell them, yeah, no worries, markets go up and markets go down, the conversation quickly turns to their concern about the markets. So, it's safe to say that the man of streets has taken notice and is getting nervous. The slide is being blamed on Brexit, but this is always something to worry about. Anyone remembers my market slips on Greece? LOL column, that's G-R-E-E-C-E. -E. Short of a zombie apocalypse, I don't worry about too much, other than what I might have for lunch. Learn to read the charts and your life will get a lot easier. A sell signal from last summer and mostly sideways action since has kept me and my peeps often sitting on our hands. I wasn't always able to keep my head while everyone else was losing theirs. I remember my first few big panics when the market went sharply against me. The epiphany later came when I was fortunate enough to be able to work with a much more seasoned trader. He seemed almost bored with the markets in spite of the sharp turns. On a slide, he just stopped out and then started trading the other side. I was amazed that it was all just a matter of fact to him. I, on the other hand, was still clinging on, still trying to fight the last battle. Too short on the Brexit slide and other slides, or not too short. As I preach, make no bones about it, shorts are a major pain in the ass. There's logistics, you have to borrow shares, and those shares can randomly be called back. Sharp retrace rallies suck, to put it mildly. Sands a serious persistent bear market, longer term trend trading on the short side is difficult at best. So why buy the shorting? Well, obviously it's the only way to make money when a market is headed lower. The not so obvious reason is because it forces you to see both sides of a market. My friends who run money, who choose not to short, or quite frankly can't do to their charter, always seem to see the glass as half full. I get that, but you really have to see both sides. Shorting helps you to be agnostic. Even if you don't short, at the least, learn to recognize the signs and signals. So what do we do? Well, first and foremost, stop the bleeding. on your stops. Yes, the market might turn right back up, and that would be great if it did, but also, it might not. Don't worry about looking stupid because you're taking a loss. Again, it's better to live the fight another day. I would imagine if this morning's bounce holds, we should start seeing some shorts. I'd rather just ride out a longer-term bull market, but if, in this game, sometimes you have to play the hand that's dealt. So, start keeping an eye out for a short or two just in case. Shorting stocks just coming off highs would probably be preferable to stocks that are already in established longer-term downtrends. As I often preach, match the pattern to the market. If the market is rolling over from high levels, find stocks that are following suit. Regardless of what you do, just remember that the market can do whatever it wants. Have a plan and follow that plan. That's all you have to do to be able to handle the Brexit slide and the next 100 market downturns. You're welcome. Note. This column was written on June 28th, and the market obviously has rallied since. And if it does take out the pre-Brexit trading, that would certainly be a good thing. But see today's market in a minute for a little bit more on that. This market would actually have to go to new highs and stay there before I started getting excited about the long side. May the trend be with you. Dave Landry. Oh, by the way, right now my trading service is on sale for the first three months. Get the first quarter for over 60% off. See the banner ad on the top of my website. Want to learn more about trading? Visit DaveLandry.com for free reports, articles, videos, and live webinars. Got a question on trading? Email Dave at Dave at DaveLandry.com.